Hi, my name is Caroline Chavier. I am a tech recruiter, but I am not your typical kind of recruiter. I'm fascinated by AI, diversity, and ethics. I am lucky to be part of a global organization which is called Women in Machine Learning and Data Science. We MLDS, it will be way simpler that way. We MLDS aims at promoting and supporting women and gender minorities in the field of AI. And we do free technical events. It's very important all over the world. In 2017, I created the Paris chapter. And since then, we became the third largest chapter in the world. And we also won uh, the Science and Research Award during the Women in Tech Challenge last year. We MLDS on a global scale, it's uh, 48,000 members. We are present in six continents. And for instance, in India, we are in Hyderabad, Pune, Delhi, and maybe soon, I hope my talk will be watched, maybe soon in Ranchi. Before I start, I have two questions and I want you to be reactive. Do you all know what AI stands for? Yes. Yes, yes. okay, artificial intelligence. Do you know Michael Jordan? Yes. Who is he? No, he is a Berkeley professor. Michael Jordan is, hey, I knew I would get you. Uh, Michael Jordan once said during a fascinating talk that AI is a term we overuse. Indeed, no one really knows how to define the human intelligence, not even the best psychologist. So you will hear me say machine learning instead of AI. But there's a trick, even AI people say AI. Machine learning is already part of our job, of our, of our daily lives. Um, Netflix uh, recommends movies. Ola takes you to the place you want to go to. Spotify finds new tracks for you. And your phone recognizes your face. So no matter what you think, AI is already there. And while coming here, I made a connection with Shiva. If I am not wrong, Shiva is also called the destroyer. But Shiva creates and transforms. And even if most of the people think machine learning is going to steal our jobs, I am hopeful. In the same way as the economist Joseph Schumpeter theorized the creative destruction, I do believe that if we use correctly the power of computing and machine learning, we are going to switch the way we deal with our times and activities. But before we all jump into the AI thingy, there is a problem we need to fix. Women are underrepresented. 3% of the Nobel Prizes in science are women. 12% of the researchers in AI are women. We cannot afford to deprive ourselves from 52% of humanity's talent. According to a McKinsey study, the miss to win for economic growth for India only has been estimated at $200 million. If you take it to a global scale, it gives you a number of $12 trillion. So what if today you had to tell someone why today's talk is important? Just answer this. Increasing the number of women modeling and implementing machine learning algorithms is a human rights issue. Why? Machine learning are going to use historical data, and this data is biased. Algorithms are not biased, but humans are, and it's our responsibility not to perpetuate these biases. Secondly, products are badly designed. Do you remember when the Apple Health app got released? It could track every piece of data except women's menstrual cycle. Do you think it's acceptable? I don't. So today, if I flew all the way from Paris, it's because I want to share actionable items we can set up in order to improve diversity in AI, but thanks to you, it can also go beyond. Diversity is not an option. It should be an incarnated priority, no matter what your motivation is. 
economic, moral, whatever, it has proven to improve for the better our, ourselves. It increases by 30% a team's productivity. And once that has been said, I am much more interested in coupling all the motivations together in order to create real diverse team. We should value women, empower them, put them in the spotlight, promote them. Because if we believe that meritocracy and objectiveness are ruling the world, we are making a mistake. Thousands of social science papers have proven it. Machine learning algorithms are biased. They are conceived by a dominant population. No offense to you, the men in the room, but the fact is that you are 78% to model it. And here, allow me to quote the founder of WeMLDS, Dr. Erin Liddell, who expressed an instrumental idea. It's important to have a diverse people creating models and software because once a software is created, then you're limited in terms of what it can do and how it can be used. So the more diverse minds we have from the start, the better. Indeed, um, if you hire a diverse team from the very beginning, your team is going to be more creative. Your team is going to attack problems in a different way. So I want you to remember, I am a recruiter, hire a diverse team from the very beginning. And beyond hiring, there is another critical issue, role models. We need role models to encourage, to retain, to keep women in machine learning. We are lacking role models in machine learning and in science in general. So at WMLDS, we did something quite simple. We offered women a safe place for them to shine, to present their work, to network. But I can hear you. The other issue with role models is that Sometimes they are hard to, to reach. Let's take an example. If you are a physicist, it's hard to become yourself becoming the next Marie Curie and get two Nobel Prizes. If I tell you, Bin Yu, Fei Fei Li, Tamara Broderick, Rachel Thomas, Anima Anand Kumar, Kate Crawford, Timni Jebru, Joy Boalamwini, Ala Wallach, Florence Dalchebuc, do these names ring a bell? No, and that's a shame, because they are the women leading the way in machine learning. They are our current role models. I have been focusing my talk on women, but they are not the only population to be underrepresented in machine learning. Elders, black, Asian, disabled, queer people, to only quote them, are highly underrepresented. But I have a good news. Once you have worked on improving and correcting your biases, prejudices, or simply the way you do things, it gets easier to encourage the other population to join your team. So it's really worth the effort. And I want also to correct something. Diversity is not about gender only. It might be the most visible thing you see, even if that can be discussed. But once you start on one topic, it's easier for the other ones. And everything I've just mentioned so far is no rocket science. It's common sense. But changing habits, challenging the status quo, Breaking the barriers, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes passion. And let's be pragmatic. When you want to work on diversity, it never leaves you. It's not over when you go out of the office. You should read about unconscious biases. You should talk with people from underrepresented groups. You could test and learn and be, like, and be like me, become an engineer. You test, learn, and you see if it works. And if it doesn't, it's OK. You do something else. This is super important because nobody will criticize you if you try. 
but will remember you if you do nothing. And I have a personal role model. Her name is Grace Hopper. Hopper, sorry, French accent. Um, she was a pioneer in computer science, and she invented the concept of human-readable programming languages. And she used to say something quite simple that I love. If you have a good idea, go ahead and do it. It's easier to apologize than to, add to get permission. So I am begging you, be unapologetic. Make diversity your priority. And to conclude, we all know this song. The world is changing, yes, but machine learning is going to take it at an unprecedented speed. And so yesterday, when I was talking with Rajiv, he said something to me that you know, made me smile. I was a recruiter two years ago, working in a company focusing on machine learning, and I was pissed off because every day I was picking up my phone and nine times out of 10, I was talking with a man. I have no problem with that, but I was like, ladies are talented, they are good in science, they kick ass in mathematics, and there is a problem. And even if I'm French, and we know how to complain. Instead of complaining, I did something. I partnered with the machine learning researchers and we opened the Paris WeMLDS chapter. And today we have more than 3,500 members. This is one of the things I am the most proud of. And today, if I had to leave the stage and leave you with one, two ideas. The fourth industrial revolution is happening. Machine learning is going to enable us to change our habits. We are going to automate things we don't like to do, but we will have the time to spend more time on creative projects, thoughts. It's exciting, but we need to include everyone. So my last sentence will be, nobody will criticize you if you try, but we'll remember you if you do nothing. Thank you.